Property investors will soon pay less tax. National is ripping out Labor's interest deductibility rules, and that means some property investors will pay less tax. But here's the thing, the rules do not change for everyone. So what were those ripped up rules, and who will and won't pay less tax? And how much tax could you potentially save as a property investor? Well, that's what you're gonna find out in today's video. And make sure you stick around to the end where I'm gonna share my thoughts about whether this is just a tax cut for rich landlords who don't really need it. Hi, I'm Ed McKnight, an economist here at Opus Partners, and this is Property Now. A lot of people talk about interest deductibility without knowing exactly what it is, and people often overcomplicate it. Basically, when interest deductibility was taken away, the IRD would calculate your investment property's profit like you don't have a mortgage despite the fact that you still have a mortgage to pay. And that makes your profit look way bigger than it really is, and because of that, you pay more tax. But let's go through some examples to get our heads around it. So let's say that you bought this property and it rents for $540 a week and you've got a 500K mortgage. Well, usually the way they calculate your profit is your rent, minus your operating costs, things like your rates, your insurance, your maintenance, minus your interest costs. And in this case, your profit is negative by about $7,000 a year at today's interest rates. Because you're making a loss, that means you don't pay any tax. And so your cash flow per week is negative $133. That's what you've got to top up the mortgage by. But what happens once interest deductibility is taken away? Well, your profit calculation changes. Now, your profit is your annual rent minus your operating costs. So instead of making a loss, the IRD now thinks your profit is $18,000, and that means you need to pay tax because you're making a profit. In this case, you're being taxed $6,000. But wait, there's more. You've still got to pay your mortgage. In this case, it's another twenty-five grand, And so your cash flow has gone from negative seven grand to negative 13 grand, and you as an investor have to reach into your pocket and pay almost $250 a week to pay all of the costs for that property. That difference of about $115 a week, that is all solely down to the tax because they've changed how they calculate your profit. But all of this is about to change and we're going back to a more normal set of rules. So what are the new rules? Now bear with me because the new rules are a bit complicated. The more normal way of calculating your profits, that's been phased in. So you can deduct 80% of your interest costs from April the 1st, 2024, and then 100% of your interest costs from the 1st of April, 2025 onwards. Now, if you're finishing up your taxes for the financial year just gone, there are some different rules for different people. If you bought your existing property before the 27th of March 2021, you can deduct 50% of your interest costs in the year just gone. If you bought after the 27th of March 2021, you can't deduct anything. But it's a bit different if you own a new build or rent your property out to social housing. Well, if that's you, you could ignore all of the rules I just told you because you don't actually have to follow them. You get 100% deductibility the whole time. Now, these are the hard percentage rules and they're all different for different people. So you might be thinking, well, this is all very well and good knowing the percentages, but how do these impact me? Well, let's go through some examples to see how much tax individual property investors could save. And if you like learning about property in this simple, numbers-focused way, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We release new videos every Monday and Wednesday. Some property investors will be impacted more than others. This property investor will save about $171,000 in tax over the next 15 years. Look at the difference in cash flow between the old and the new rules. It is astounding. But the exact impact that you get depends on when you bought, what you bought, and who you choose to rent your property out to. Now imagine that there are three properties next to each other and are all identical, exact same numbers. It's an 800K house with a 600K mortgage and they all rent out for $700 a week. Peter and Sally owned the first house. They bought it in April 2021 directly after the new rules came in. So they've had no interest deductibility over the last few years and they've had to face the tough new tax rules straight away. Well, what happens next year? Well, they get 80% deductibility over the next 12 months and they'll save almost 8 
$1,000 in tax. That's about $152 a week. Well, next door, we've got Kendra and Shay. They own the second house. And again, this has the exact same numbers. But this couple bought their investment property two months before. That was in February 2021, directly before the interest deductibility rules were first announced by Labor. Well, over the last year, Kendra and Shay, they've been able to deduct 50% of their interest costs when calculating their tax. When the rules change, that goes to 80%. They're not going to save as much. They're going to save $38 a week in tax. Well, why is that? They didn't face the full impact of Labor's tax rules. So when the rules change back, they're not going to benefit as much. Now, let's move to the third house. This one's owned by Deborah and Hone. Now, they bought at the same time as our first couple, after the new rules were announced. But they did something different. They decided to rent it out through the local Salvation Army, which is a social housing provider. And that means that Deborah and Hone got a special tax status. They could deduct all their interest costs, so they legally dodged the impact of those higher taxes. Well, once the tax rules change, when National switches them out, nothing changes. They continue to deduct all their interest costs, so there is no difference in the amount of tax that they pay. And it would be the same deal if this property was a new build. You didn't have to pay more tax over the last few years, and you didn't switch to Labor's punishing rules, so when everyone switches back, nothing changes for you. That does mean that not every investor gets a $152 a week tax cut. It depends on what you bought, when you bought it, how big your mortgage is, and who you rent your property out to. Though, if you were listening carefully, you would have just heard that I called it a tax cut. But is this just a tax cut for rich landlords who don't really need it? Well, no. This rule stops property investors being overtaxed. No other business in New Zealand has to calculate their profits the way that the Labour government wanted us property investors to. This rule change is about levelling the playing field and treating property investors just like every other business. And this is really important because New Zealand needs property investors in the market. If you guys decide that you're all going to sell your rental properties, there will be less supply of rental accommodation and rents will go up even further. And if all of these changes is making you think, yeah, I think it is the right time for me to invest in property, well, head over to our website, opuspartners.co.nz. We help regular Kiwis grow their wealth through new build investment properties.